All right, let me start this video off with my motto. If a man says he knows God, he'll probably tell you about a book. But if a man says he knows himself, he can probably tell you about God. That's the point of my page, is to get you to stop relying on a book and try to learn about yourself. The book is about you. You're not, you don't have to be about the book. The people who wrote these books, it's 66 books. It's not one, Bible is not one book, it's 66 individual books. And they're not even in order. This is the point of this to get your own epiphanies, your own revelations. So what's been happening lately is I've been getting a lot of questions from my subscribers about the Bible. So I'm going to use one of the questions about this Jonah story and the whale. I'm going to use this video as a, as a step by step to show you how I break these stories down and how you should be doing this on your own. Now, I don't want to discourage you from um, asking me questions, but what I think when people ask these questions, they either didn't watch all my videos or they still can't get past the fact that the stories in the Bible are not meant to be literal and they're allegories. So you might be still stuck or struggling with your religious type of mind, and that's fine. But I just want you to know my qualifications. I'm not a religious person, so I don't even know most of these stories in detail. I've heard of them, like I heard of you know Jonah being swallowed by a fish. I heard of Moses parting the Red Sea. But before I did that Moses video, I hadn't even read the whole story or knew anything about the tabernacle. I broke that down just by using these methods I'm going to show you with this new story. So uh, I'm going to tag the person who asked about Jonah, but uh, I'm going to show him and, and anybody else, if you got any questions, show you how to use this. this. This page is really about magic, about you using magical processes to find out any answer you want. So that's one reason for magic. Another thing is to manifest things you want. So your manifestation just might be clarity. You can, you, so I just want to give my background. I didn't join any groups for as Masonic and take any oaths. I uh, just wanted to show people that I don't have to, you don't have to dress a certain way. I'm, I'm not only wear, I I'm regular. I don't wear dashikis or none of that. I don't wear anything on my head. I'm just a personal trainer and massage therapist from Chicago. Uh, I joined a gang uh, when I was young called the Black Peace Stones. Uh, they're basically based on Islamic or Moorish uh, ideology. So I learned some religions, uh, some things about the Moors with that. Uh, so, uh, they became the Bloods in LA. Uh, offshoot of a Chicago gang called Blackstones. Another gang is the Gangster Disciples from Chicago. They basically use the Judaic cross, I mean, um, symbol, the, or Silla Solomon, or the Star David, the six point star. So they became Crips when they migrated to uh, LA. All right. So I just wanted to, I grew up a Baptist or Christian, if you will. I dated women with different religions, so I learned certain things through the women I dated. But that's basically my background. I want to say that to say I'm not an expert, I'm a regular person. I don't. I, had, I didn't have to join anything. I pretty much just studied this through videos on YouTube, studying through books, and before um, the internet became uh, accessible, you know, I pretty much read a lot of this stuff. So now you can get the etymology of words off the off the internet instead of looking through an old dictionary. Okay. So I want to give you that background. So I wanted to show you I'm a regular person, and I started this out of curiosity. And I know as people who I've, I've watched videos with three to six hours long and they probably don't really tell you much but they could have did it in three minutes and that was my point in some of these short videos try to make them short as possible so I'm thinking how I was thinking when I became when I first started getting interested in this stuff it was frustrating to watch some videos and they mention stuff like oh yeah you know Beyonce did a ritual that was a ritual that they, she did but they never tell you what a ritual was or how she what she got out of it so you know I, I try my best to describe to you how thought forms are made through rituals and that video about Beyonce all right, so you can go back to that one if you want to look at that. All right, so let's get to Jonah. Step one, I mean, the, my resources are the Wikipedia, the Bible, a metaphysical Bible dictionary, which is, I use this one by Charles Fillmore. So I, I recommend you get this metaphysical Bible dictionary and a Strong's Concordance Bible dictionary. All right, so step one, I usually just get right, I go to Wikipedia now, because it's basically a summary and uh, jot down all the names that come up in that story jot down all the numbers that come up and then I apply that to the fact that it has to be about my body and or about my physical body and or the heavenly body alright so it's either gonna have to do with your body or astrology and it turns out it was so keep in mind and I know the story before someone asked me to do a video on it so these are the names I'm gonna have you copy them down because I'm gonna move it over to so I can show you astrologically how it plays out and physically on the body so these are the numbers only one I didn't put on here is the number five. It shows up with this guy, Jerobam II, not the first one, but Jerobam II, he who reigned for 41 years, 
four and one is five. So we're dealing with the five senses. So I'm gonna show you how this story is really has to do with the physical judgment that which Jonah did, uh, and and he wasn't really paying attention to the source or the spiritual underlying. All right. So I'm gonna do a lot of reading in this one. So you just go back to this when you need to see it. All right. So this is basically the astrology chart. Okay. This is gonna be serve as our well. So so if you ever seen any cartoon. Any cartoon with a, with a whale, it all has like a big old head, a big old uh, under the mouth, and a little bit of tail on the back. So just imagine this as the whale. This would be the front where the mouth is at. And imagine this as a tail. I remember a little hole or spout up there where the whale can spew you out. Okay? Um, in the story in Wikipedia, it talks about Jonah being from a prophet from Gath Heifer. So what you want to know about Gath means wine press. Wine, anytime you see bread and wine, bread is flesh. Wine is blood. So those are euphemisms for, for flesh and blood. So if he's gath or wine press, you're talking about blood pressure. So when you're dealing with wine, you're dealing with it's four cardinal points. You got 321, 621, 921, and 1221. So we're dealing with those four cardinal. The word cardinal, I told you most of these religious uh, stations like a bishop is three degrees. Uh, a, um, a deacon is 10 degrees. It's 72 deacons. Um, um, What's another one? Um, uh, the cardinal. So you got four cardinal points. I told you all these names. They come up with church and different stuff. Is uh, really they apply. That's how you know this stuff is all about astrology and about your body. All right. So this particular cardinal point. If you look up when you reap, when wine season is, you can look it up yourself. When they when they really harvest grapes, it's somewhere around September. A little bit before and a little bit after, but usually the, the middle point is September. So you're going to also know this is when uh, Jonah is celebrated. So when you look up uh, Jonah, it's going to say September 22nd is when he's commemor commemorated or they have a feast of Jonah, the prophet Jonah. He's one of the minor 12 prophets. But this is feast is around. So we know we're talking about wine season. So this is the wine part. So this is when Jesus turned water to wine. He went from up here to down here. All right, so I'm going to skip through the story uh, back and forth. So one of the parts of the story, after he became angry, that, that God didn't punish the people of Nineveh. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Nineveh. Nineveh. Um, he went away, and wherever he went, he was angry, and the sun was on his face. So God ended up uh, making a plant grow. So that was justice, or I I, I, I interpret that as the scales of justice. So he was trying to be uh, merciful for uh, and just and show some justice over um, Jonah. Jonah recognized the shade and was thankful for the shade, but didn't give. Because that's the outer part of it. But he didn't look at the underlying thing, which was the source of it, which was God. So a God made a worm bite it and the plant withered. So the plant or the shade was him showing justice or mercy. The next next day, he ended up having a worm bite it and the plant died. So we're dealing with a serpent, a worm. Anytime you hear serpent, worm, or scorpion, we're dealing with Scorpio. Uh, later on, it became um, an eagle. Because you're looking at the four uh, cardinal points being the bull, Taurus the bull. The opposite would be the eagle, then you're dealing with the lion, and the man is Aquarius. So if you ever look at those things, that's what they're talking about. Aquarius is the man, Taurus is the bull, Leo is the lion, and then blah, blah, blah. All right, so we're dealing with adverse signs, all right? So that's the, that's sort of like towards the end of the story. I just want to point that out. So we're dealing with a guy who's from this Virgo area right here, same as the Jesus story. Uh, this is Virgil, also the house of bread. So this is where uh, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. Uh, this is Mary, because you know the, the symbol for Virgo is looks like an M and a Y, so we're talking about Mary. All right. So down here, he was in the belly for three days and three nights. In the New Testament, Jesus made reference to this as being just like his resurrection. So we're talking about this is the this is the belly of, of the whale. How do you know that? The play on words. Gath means wine press. Heifer means pitfall or whale. So the pit or the fall, you fell down here. So this is fall or autumn. We're talking about fall. And it's a play on words. W-E-L-L -L is the same as W-H-A-L-E. So we're dealing with a whale. So this, this whole story is about Jonah basically letting his blood pressure get up too high over physical things. So he judged the people of Nineveh based on thinking they were wicked. He only seen the outer things because he didn't see them worshiping or doing what they were supposed to do. When God sent him there to prophesy to him, he looked, he wrote them off as, man, they just wicked. What God knew was they're not wicked. They're just ignorant. That's why you got to go there and teach them. Because if you notice their name, it, it means exterior growth. Only they know is how to grow outwardly. They, they, they basically are the seat of animal desires awaiting spiritual instruction. 
they needed some spiritual instruction. They were ignorant. It's just it's equivalent to people who just don't know. You can't you can't kill them just because they didn't know. You know, some religion tell you you can. If you don't know, you're so far because you didn't try to know. So that's what this story is really about. He's a he's the son of a certain type of truth. His daddy was named Amitai, which means truth. But it was a truth, that eye for an eye type of truth, where you only judge people on their outwardness. And one of the names from Jonah means um, fermenting and intoxicating. So we're going back to that wine again. Wine is blood. Wine press or blood pressure. So we're dealing with the blood pressure, the pitfalls of letting your blood pressure go up by judging people without love and mercy. So he judged those people without divine love and divine mercy. That's what the story is really about. So physically, um, it tells you that he went to... Um, Jaffa, he, he went to Jaffa to sail to Tarshish. So Jaffa is a seaport or a border of uh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the heart. So it's ruled by the sun. This is the heart. So this is Leo. So we always, you know, I told you most of these stories are Leo. This is the Samson and Delilah story. So the opposite of Samson is Aquarius. Delilah means water bucket. So I already did the story on that. So this is Melchizedek. If you look at Melchizedek, who Abraham pays tithes to, uh, and who Jesus followed after the order of Melchizedek, he was the, the prince or king of Salem, same as Jerusalem, the king of the heart who uh, brought bread and wine also. So we're talking about flesh and blood. So we're dealing with uh, Melchizedek also. So he went, instead of going down here to, to Nineveh, he went the opposite to the animal, which is your lower nature. So these are all your lower desires. So it's down here dealing with your genital area. Because I remember all this is dealing with Satan or Seth. So you get down here with Satan and all that stuff. So he decided not to go down to the pit. He went the opposite way and sailed to started at Jaffa or the, or the border of uh, Jerusalem and went to uh, Tarshish. Tarshish means gravitational pull or, or having rash judgment. Basically, he's being rash. So it's, it's just symbolizing that he called himself trying to go up and flee because he thought he was more highly or above them, but it really just pulled him down. And that's how he ended up getting pulled. Gravitational pull, the gravitational energy or pre precipitant force, precipitant meaning head first. So he basically rushed down and, and, and later on in the story he ended up in the belly of the, of the whale. So that's what, because remember it, it was translated as big fish or whale or different stuff like that or sea monster. So whenever you're dealing with sea monster or a man, when he was, he was in a, when he was on a boat he was a, and with other fishermen, they were basically seamen. So we're dealing with seamen or the Lord nature again. Everything's about sex. So okay. So I'm tying it back in. So we're dealing with high blood pressure because we're dealing with the heart, which pumps out blood through all the other areas. He tried to go one way, got his blood pressure up too high. And he ended up down, rushing back down to his lower nature anyway, where he ended up having to go prophesy to them. That's when the number four came up. He told them, you got 40 days or you'll be overthrown, so on and so forth. And then he ended up running again, fleeing again. And that's when the whole story I just told you earlier about the plant, uh, God causing the plant to grow, and so on and so forth. So um, this is a this will be a whole nother lecture, but just you can always take note of where all your body parts line up with the different um, with the twelve houses, because uh, basically um, Gath is a Philistine city. So I told you this is all about the physical. Uh, Gath is um, it's five Philistine cities. Gath being one of them, or the wine being one of them. There was, these are the five lords or the five senses. So we're dealing with that number five again. I told you Jeroboam the second. Uh, reign for 41 years. So this is all whenever you hit the number five you're talking about your five senses or or your lower desires So this is pretty much all about your physical being judged instead of your spiritual potential. That's what the story is about. But um, um, When I bring up the Philistine city for I had a reason I can't think of it now um, the, the plant significant castor oil plant it used to be used in the old days in Egypt or Kemet as a, it's a slow burning oil that was used to light lamps. So anything we do in oil, the opposite of semen is shemen. I told you that in my Messiah video with the uh, pass or shibboleth or sibboleth as if you, you know, so shemen is your, is your spinal fluid. So we're dealing with castor oil being symbolizing that oil that goes up your spine. Remember he ended up dropping back down. So it, it went from that holy oil, which is in Hebrew is called shemen. He went down and became a semen. That's because they threw him in the sea. All right, they threw him overboard. Um, uh, what else? I told you about blood pressure, the Philistine. Um, now I want to go back. Um, so although I, I mentioned Jeroboam and uh, Rehoboam in another video, what you need to know about them is because we're talking about the one, that Jeroboam the second, because he prophesied, if you look in the Wikipedia page, it said he's, 
he's the one to prophesy that that he would get that the that he would get the ten territories back. Well, they talking about out of ten tribes. They really talking about your junk. What scientists call junk DNA. I did a video on this. How they say we only got two active strands of DNA, and uh, really we got twelve. And they call the other ten junk DNA. The two that remain was the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. But they pretty much just call it the tribe of Judah because what's important to them is Leo. In, on the physical so those are your subjective consciousness so remember he was uh it, it symbolized those 10 fleeing which is your intellectual so our junk dna our, our latent demon dna which is our talents our spiritual talents they 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 fled us so now we've been ruled only by those two which is our animal forces or our need to be human so that's that's another part of the story because they mentioned that on wikipedia how he prophesied that one day we would end up activating all 12 of our strands so all 12 tribes all 12 territories so just trying to tie this all in. And the reason why some of these names may not show up in Wikipedia, uh, I brought up Assyria. It's the mental realm. So we're talking about the mind. It's the country of Ashur. So that brings us to Ashur. Um, um, I forgot why I brought this up. But I know Nimrod is the one who, oh, that's why. Because Nimrod is the one who made this city. Uh, this place, if you will, and if you see the names from Nimrod, this is probably what uh, Jonah was. This, the, the, uh, he was looking at them as being insubordinate, being rebellious, being rebellious, or so, so, uh, self-ruling. But this one, this is just because this was the maker of them, doesn't mean that's what they were. So this Jonah was describing them as being the the, off, uh, the offspring of Nimrod. Okay, um, I think that's it. So hopefully this helps the person who acts and others also. But more importantly, I'm, I'm hoping this helps you to learn how to break down your own, act your own, use, especially if you want to deal with these Bible stories. Uh, hopefully just to help you where you can break down your own videos, I mean, own stories on any story, whether it's the Bible or movies or whatever have you. But more importantly is to get off of asking me questions about this and let's get to the magic part, to where you can get your own epiphanies. That's the point of my page. Uh, originally, it was supposed to be for my niece who asked me a million questions. I started off making these videos so she can look at it while she's away at school. And she probably looked out, looked at one or two of them. Because every time I see her, she asks me questions. And it'd be stuff that I've already talked about. So uh, right now, I'm up to like 95 subscribers, which is great. but Because it, it was really just for one person. And she's not even on there. <laughs> so uh, I appreciate you guys. So it keeps me going. I want to help. But I just want you to know I'm not an expert and I don't want you to rely on me as what I say is is God or go. You know what I'm saying? Just you can be your own God. That's what I'm trying to teach you to be. Ye are all God's children of the most high. Okay? So you come up with your own interpretations. You can use mine as a way. Some people have a way of explaining things that's better. I, I, I got a guy I listen to. He has a way of explaining things and I still I, I re-explain them to make it make sense to me. So you can use me for that, I, I would say. Or some of the stuff you just don't know. You may not have known anything about Adam Kadmon, K-A-D-M-O-N, but that's basically the primordial man in space. So everything out there as above is so below, as it is in heaven, as it is down on earth. So that's basically the hermetic axiom. So um, so you just want to get into the seven laws of our Hermes or Tahuti. But um, basically that's what this all is. So you'll learn where you land up in the sky. So you know what part of your body and so on and so forth is activated during certain times of the year. All right. So I'm trying to get this under 20 minutes. Let me get a sidebar because somebody mentioned something about the dream of Daniel. He tried to correct me on something. And, I, I, you know, he took it literally. And he, he was talking about some kingdoms. He read what the Bible said. And he took their interpretation. It's talking about Rome and different ruling cities. Ruling, but it was uh, in, in uh, Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Go to the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 2. It talks about ne ne Nebuchadnezzar's dream and, and uh, how Daniel was the only one that could interpret it. And it was talking about, uh, uh, I can read it. Uh, going down to verse 32, it was talking about an image whose head was of gold, breast and arms of silver, his belly uh, and, and his thighs of brass, and his legs of iron, uh, his feet part iron and part clay. So what we're dealing with is this again, because you said his head was gold. So well, I told you it's four quadrants. This first quadrant with these first three, Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, is the golden part, golden quadrant. Then the next three is the silver quadrant. This is the bronze quadrant, and this is the iron quadrant. Cause it said part clay, part feet. You're basically describing the physical body. Cause remember, we was made from clay, and, and, and breathed into us was life. Blah blah blah. How the allegory goes. So the iron is your blood. So when I get to talking about alchemy, you're gonna talk about four metals. Your, your thing is to do something with your blood, turn your blood into gold. That's what this is all really about. You're talking about gold, silver, 
uh, bronze or copper, and you're dealing with iron and clay. Clay is with the whole physical body or the dirt part of you is made up. So uh, Daniel 2, verse 32, which you can read that whole chapter 2 in the book of Daniel. But uh, I don't take a literal interpretation. It says right there in the Bible, it's about kingdoms and Babylon being one and Rome being this. Uh, if you want to go by the Bible, then, then go by that. But I'm telling you, we're talking about different ages, the golden age, the silver age. And we also talking about the physical body. His dream was really about you. Everything is about you and what's in the sky. All right. Hope you enjoyed.